Street Talk. And joining me now is Omar Faruk Akbal, who is the chairman of the Turkey Jordan Business Council here in Istanbul, and Nejmettin Kaymas, who is the chief project director at Invest in Turkey, which is also based in Istanbul. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the set. So, Turkey loosened investment requirements for foreigners to obtain. Uh, Turkish passports and many have signed up. Faruk, I want to start with you. How have the results been so far? Actually, Turkey has been always a very important location for the international investments, especially for real estate investments. Turkey is doing a really good job. Recently, we have achieved more than 70% higher than 2018 in the first half of the year in 2019. But when you compare with these numbers, uh, the, com the countries that Turkey is competing, just like Europe, mm -hmm. European countries, just like UK, Spain, or UAE, when you compare with these countries, Turkey has a lot of more way to uh, pro progress. I, I believe some EU countries generated like 25 billion euros in the last uh, 10 years. So uh, what do you say? Are these figures better than expected? Uh, uh, in these, your point. These figures are important for us that it's showing a progress. So mm -hmm. it's going well. But when you compare what is the achievement, real achievement for Turkey, especially the, comp uh, the potential of Turkey is mm -hmm. here very important. When you are speaking about the 80 million population with a growing economy mm -hmm. in terms of location, geographical situation, and the, uh, all the cultural and the historical potential that Turkey sure. has, when you look at from this perspective to the numbers, it's not enough. Yeah, okay. So, so it's quite a new project, by the way, definitely. right? So Nejmettin, is this a temporary policy or it will become permanent? Well, in fact, it is not a temporary, it's not a new, and it is an old policy. And it has been uh, a policy which has been, uh, uh, which has been, which has been uh, followed by the government over the past uh, 15, 16 years, you know. Mm -hmm. When we look at the... But uh, its promotion just started like that, no, right? It, it, had, it was always in a progress, you know, mm -hmm. and we started in 2003 uh, to improve uh, it, our investment climate in order to attract investment into real estate, in property markets into Turkey. And then we saw uh, back in 2003, $1 billion uh, investment mm -hmm. uh, coming from, uh, uh, just from uh, property purchases. Mm -hmm. Then the government uh, further into, uh, in 2012 uh, made a new amendment to the uh, existing legislation to in, uh, in order to uh, attract more uh, investment into, into property sector. And that was uh, uh, the uh, reciprocity uh, principle requirement was significantly uh, loosened so mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we can attract more uh, uh, property buyers from all around the world. And, and then uh, in 2017, uh, citizenship was granted uh, for uh, real estate uh, buyers and as well as for some, uh, some investors. And then further in, 2000, uh, uh, in 2018, uh, the government uh, again uh, reduced the uh, requirements for, yes. uh, for real estate purchase for other investment types. And the government is committed to attract foreign direct investment uh, into, uh, into Turkey. Yeah, we're going to get on that Definitely. because uh, it's very important to have yeah. a foreign yeah. direct investment yeah. in Turkey. But Faruk, I understand this policy will stay in place and their numbers will continue to rise. So what so sorts of uh, long-term trends we're likely to see? Uh, I'm again going to give an example from the Europe. When you look at the UK, the 10% of the uh, property investments are through the foreigners, it has been done. Yes. So this number is almost less than 1% of the properties are owned by foreigners in Turkey. Mm -hmm. So when you look at from this perspective, so I believe that we have potential to reach 10% of properties to be invested by foreigners, which is very important for us to bring the uh, directly the investments to Turkey. Yeah, so Iranians made up the largest group of investors who were granted Turkish uh, citizenship as we look. So uh, could U.S. sanctions be cause of this and why people uh, from Iran, Iraq, of course, Yemen, Afghanistan and Syria choose Turkey? Uh, there are many reasons uh, to choose Turkey, but first and foremost, I think Turkey itself is, a, is, is an attractive destination uh, for many, many nationals from around the world to, to invest mm -hmm. in and to buy proper property. Uh, as regards with the uh, nationals from Middle Eastern countries, uh, but uh, th there might be some reasons, as you mentioned, but there are also 
countries, uh, nations from other countries, from China, from, uh, from UK, from other countries are also investing in Turkey and also some of them are also uh, acquiring and applying for citizenship. Mm -hmm. There are many, many reasons. Uh, I think the, uh, it's a whole package, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the country itself, it's people, it's culture, it's the uh, investment ecosystem, as well as it is integration with the rest of the world. So, I mean, we see these investors are not just looking for a Turkish passport or Turkish yeah. citizenship, and they are thinking in the long term, uh, in, if they are Tur uh, thinking in the long term, what kind of opportunities Turkey offers? Now, first, uh, as Faruk said, you know, Turkey is a large country with 82 million people. It's a growing young population. It's vibrant. And when you look at its industrial base, its in industrial infrastructure, Turkey, you, you will see that Turkey is the only country in this region which pretty much produce everything, you know. So which it, sectors come to the fore? Lots of sectors, and that, that's, that's my point in, in, indeed, mm -hmm. you know. It, it has a diversified economy. We are not a natural resource country. We don't depend, unfortunately, we don't have any uh, primary natural resource like oil and gas. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to, and we have to, and uh, we have to diversify our economy but it's not a, a new process. It started uh, decades ago, and now we are, we have, uh, we, we are you know, seeing the consequence of those policies. And that's why we're seeing, for example, Turkey is one of the uh, uh, largest manufacturers of automotive manufacture in the world. It's also uh, a lar one of the largest manufacturers of uh, electrical machinery. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's active in other areas, aerospace, defense, real estate, uh, as we are talking about uh, infrastructure, finance. It's a well-diversified economy, and it's also well-integrated with the rest of the world, with the European, in terms of legislation. It has aligned its business legislation with the international uh, standards and uh, norms. So, Farouk, in the first half of 2019 alone, uh, properties worth $3 billion were yeah. sold to foreigners. So what kind of an impact it had on the market? Uh, which is equal to almost 20,000 units. When you compare with the second when the expectation for second half of the year, is always more than the first half of the year. Mm -hmm. So when we look at uh, these numbers, we are expecting more than 50,000 units to be sold to, by, uh, to purchase by the foreigners. Mm -hmm. So and you the think total that revenue, the trend will continue? Yeah, yeah, the total revenue also, it's expected to be more than $6 billion. So gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.